Hello again, we have learned some basic data types and math functions at previous video. In this video, we'll complete math functions and the we'll do a simple project. Also, we'll learn to how use cross-reference table and define functions, during the project. Alright, here, you see other math functions. First instruction is used to square the value of a floating point number at its input, and write the result to its output. Next function is used form the square root from the value at its input. This instruction has a positive result if the input value is greater than zero. If input values are less than zero, the output returns an invalid floating point number. If the value at input in is zero, the result is also zero. This instruction calculates the natural logarithm to base number E, which is 2.718282. This one, calculates the exponent from the base number E, and the value specified at its input. This instruction determines the decimal places of the value at its input. For example for 23.5, it just returns 0.5. Well, we can use the exponentiate instruction to raise the value at the first input, to a power specified with the value at the second input. Here, this instruction raises the value 2 at the first input, to power 3 which is at the second input. Its result is 8. Alright, now you see trigonometric functions, which can be used in TIA software. For example see the first instruction. Cosine value. This instruction calculates the cosine of the angle. Pay attention, the size of the angle is specified in radians at the its input. Next instruction is arc cosine, which is used to calculate the size of the angle from the cosine value, which corresponds to this value. Only valid floating point numbers, within the range minus 1 to 1 can be used at the input. The calculated angle size is in radians, its range is, from 0 to number p, p is about 3.14. Next functions are sine and tangent value, and respectively their inverse functions. When you are using math functions, pay attention to their domain and range. Now let's do a simple project. Try to write, a program to calculate this function, where x equals 1500 and y equals 500. Pause this video, you can do it in many ways. Then compare your program result with mine, to check is that correct? Then write a function to calculate this function for any x and y values. So, I'm going to write a program to calculate this math function. First, I insert add, and subtract instructions, from the left list. I select real format. Because my numbers can be either integer or fractional. Real format support both of them. Well, I want to calculate this function for x equals 1500 and y equals 500. Real format needs 4 bytes to store a number. So I write md0 here. Pay attention, I used the MD0 address. So the next free address of memory is MD4. Now let me define a suitable tags for used memory addresses. Now I insert sqrt and exponentiate instructions.
let me complete this line program, like previous. Here, the exponentiate must use number 2 as its power, instead of 3. Ok, I could use square math function too. Now, I just need to sum results, which be calculated at the second line. Well, let's test this program. All right, this my PLC result. Here, I have calculated my function with Windows Calculator. As you see, the PLC results is wrong, why? Pay attention, PLC math functions are simple, but we need to care about data type and used addresses. We must use a separated memory to store each number. Here I'm going to use cross reference table. Select your PLC and then click on cross reference icon. This table shows all used objective in my program. From this list, let me select this filter. Now I can see the used block, OB1, and all used tags. For example if I click on this tag, this table tell me, this tag is used twice in the first network, One time, the program just read its value, and add another instruction, write a number on this address. Click here to check overlapping. As you see, three tags have overlapping, with at least one another address. For example select first address and click here. At the bottom, this table tell me, the selected address, has an overlapping with two addresses. To have an imaging of used addresses and what is overlapping, click here, on program info. Here are some information about the program. Click here. Here are two tables, 
which show input, output, and memory assignment. We've just used memory address in the program. So see the right table. Here, pay attention to D word column. If you remember we have used MD0 to store X plus Y. This address include byte 0 to byte 3, then we have used the next free memory address, MD4, to store X minus Y. This address use byte 4 to byte 7. Also, this table tell us, we have used 3D word address which have overlapping together. This is my programming mistake. For example the byte number 10 is used to store SQRT X plus Y, power 2 of X minus Y and final result. As you see, after MD8, the next free address is MD12. So, let me modify the address of this tag, power 2 of X minus Y open main block. Right click on desired tags and select rewire tag. Here change the address to MD12. Alright, as you see, the overlapping problem has been solved for power 2 of X minus Y tag. For the final result tag, the next free address is MD16, pay attention. It's not necessary to use exactly the next free address. I can use MD17, MD18, or MD19. Because these addresses have not been used yet. Let me change final result tag address to MD17. Now the overlapping problem has been solved. Let me define two extra addresses. An input address and also a bit memory. Now, you can see two used addresses at these table too. Let me to come back to the program and clear these extra addresses. Now let me test the program again. At this time, the program calculates function result correctly. Let me exit from this simulation. Alright. Here is a better way to do this project. You have learned how to use function before. Here. We can define input, output, or local variable for a function. I want to create a function which get x and y with real format, and returns a real number, as its output. Now, I'm defining x and y variables, as the function inputs, and final result as its output. I select real format for these variables. Also I can define some internal variable, which can be used only at this function. You can write the previous program here. Just use x and y instead of constant numbers.
and use internal variables instead of memory addresses, and don't forget to use the function output variable, to return final result. Now let me use this function in the main program. As you see this function has two inputs and one output. It can get two real numbers and return desired value. You can use this function many times. So when you need a part of program, which will be repeat, you can write it once time in a function and use the function. Let me test this program. As you see, the function result is the same as previous program. In the next video we'll see what are move operations. Thanks for watching.